Okay, here's another example. Okay, here's a finite state machine. And I think in this example, what I'd like to do is do the dependency graph simultaneous with this. So we see them both be constructed, and we'll have a whole picture when we're done. And I'll try to keep it very neat so everybody can follow. But I need you guys to help me construct it, number one, because it'll keep you concentrating, and number two, it'll stop me from making any careless mistake. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by creating a set of nodes here that represent distinguishable pairs. So what are in that list? What are distinguishable? Final states are distinguishable from non-final states. So I get AE, BE, CE, DE, and same thing for Fs, right? AF, BF, CF, and DF. Those are all the states that are distinguishable to begin with. And if I put them in this picture, where do they end up? I'll put X's in this picture on these pairs. Where are they? Yeah, so describe it for me. Help my brain. Down the F column. That's what you said. <laughs> now what? Is that it? Eight oh eight. Thank you, Chris. Okay, good. So on the dependency graph, it's just eight isolated nodes, and they all have X's on them. I'm going to X them. I think this kind of masks what's going on, and this shows it. It's really a graph searching problem, and this is, makes it seem magical. All right, what do you do next in our algorithm? You go to the AD pair, and you check how it depends in this graph. What does it depend on? So let's throw the AD in our picture. Put it up here if it fits, AD. What does AD depend on? On a 0, it goes to B and D. So it depends on the pair BD. Is BD in here? No. It's out here. BD. And on a 1, it depends on CD. In our algorithm, what do we do? We basically just looked at a piece of this graph. We notice that if there were x's here, this should get x'd. But there weren't x's here. Now, there might end up being x's there later as we look at the rest of the graph. But we haven't seen the rest of the graph yet. So we're going to have to remember that if they got x's here, we have to propagate those x's back against the arrows. So we look in BD and CD, and we put in, in each one of those, AD. OK? That's how we remember. That's our backtracking mechanism. And now we move on to AC. What does AC depend on? On a 0, it goes to BF. Well, for the first time the whole day, we actually got a success, right? AC goes to BF. B and F are distinguishable on the empty string because it's a final and a non-final. AC is therefore distinguishable on the string 0. Getting a 0 from C, you accept. Getting a 0 from A, you don't accept. You can't possibly have those be the same room, where walking out the 0 gets you into the treasure, and walking out the 0 from this other room doesn't get you to the treasure. They're not the same room. So these have to be distinguishable. 
So AC gets marked. In my dependency graph, I can still put the line in. Where does the line go? BF, which is, well, I promised it would be neat, and I lied. It'll be as neat as I can make it. AC goes to BF. Now, in this algorithm, we don't bother checking the 1 once we get a distinguished state. If it's distinguished on the 0, fine, we're done, go on. But to complete the dependency graph, we really should check the 1. And AC on a 1 goes to CD, which is here. In the algorithm, we would not go ahead on the CD line and put AC, because AC's already been X. There's no reason to go ahead and add it there. And if you're saying, hey, what if I looked at the 1 first? Well, then you would have put it there, and that's the way it goes. There is some arbitrariness to what order you do this. All right, how about AB now? All right, somebody who is on this side of the room. B E. Uh, good. B E N is zero. Oh, but look, B E are distinguishable. What are we doing now? A B? You said it goes to B E? B E is distinguishable. There's an X, it connects. So A B therefore gets an X. What about the one, just for completeness, Sharon? Where does the one go on an A B? Uh, Back here. Good. There's no reason to check it, is there? It's no reason to check it, no. Except that I want to make this whole dependency graph complete when we're done so you can look at it and see what it means. According, and then We should yeah. be Xing AC and AB up there, right? According to our... According, in, the in the graph, in according the graph. to what we have established syntactically. What do you, we, do, we can't exit yet, no. No, the... the Where? You have anything. X in, in the diagram on the left, so X the nodes in the graph, AC and AB. I, I, I X'd AC. But you go right, over to the graph itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hmm. Who was that woman? <laughs> it's like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> it's like the math Lone Ranger. Where's Tonto? They don't have Tonto in this decade. He's like, write him out of the script. Not politically correct. No Tonto. What's he talking about? <laughs> Where am I up to here? Uh, BD, we're up to here? OK, let's look at BD. BD, what does it depend on? It depends on DD, right, which is an automatic indistinguishable. And it depends on, and it depends on DE. DE is X, right? So BD gets X. Oh, sorry. Look at that. I'm glad we do, because as you can see, this x back arrow has to propagate back to this. If we had seen the graph, you can just see, oh, we'll go back on the arrows and propagate. But we're looking at this graph in pieces before we saw it's all its connectivity. That's what this funny picture represents. So we remembered that if BD ever gets an x, we remembered that over here, go back and have AD get an x. So this gets an x, this gets an x, and I crossed that out, I did it. Everybody OK? So this is a very different example than the last time. In this example, everything's getting distinguished. It's a distinguished example. BC now. I don't have BC up there, so I'll put it up. What does BC depend on? EF? Right? EF? EF's not even in here, right? So let's EF. And what else? And DD. Well, did we do EF yet? No. So over here we put in BC. 